So I kind of started on this earlier, but I'm gonna take you to what I've already done. This is a Ferrero Rocher box. Um, someone gave me this bowl of chocolates to me for Christmas. And I finished it up and I'm gonna make a travel um, watercolor set for my mom because they're going on a trip and I thought she might like it. And I thought this would be a great box for because all the little chocolates had their own little circles. And so what I've done so far is I put a, I mod podge a piece of paper onto the bottom. It's still wet. And then I stuck the plastic back down. Um, and then I took, cause I have a bunch of transparencies. Um, they were at a garage sale. And so I cut several of them all into pieces and I've, I've Mod Podge two together and I'm going to Mod Podge these together then. It should be fairly sturdy to go on top just to kind of separate your paints from everything else. Um, now this sticker is on there like super crazily on there so there's no way of getting it off and I don't know it seems a little cheap to Anyway, I tried to cover it with some acrylic, uh, liquid acrylic, but it just made it shiny. And so that's not what I want it to look like. So what I'm going to do instead is I had bought this um, wrapping paper at a garage sale and it's embossed with flowers. So I'm gonna cut it out and attach it to the top and to the bottom so that it looks like a pretty little box. And then I am going to um, fill it with paint and I'm also going to um, include some, some pens or some paint brushes in there. Sorry, my mind's just not quite working right. And I have this silver black velvet extra. So I'm gonna put that in with hers and, to, uh, and a watercolor brush. So to catch you up, I used an X-Acto knife and basically I folded my pans, figured out where my edges were, and then I cut it with an X-Acto knife, which was strangely satisfying. It was possibly the easiest way to cut wrapping paper ever. Um, now I'm just trying to figure out the best way to essentially wrap it.
So I've cut um, half of the Canson, half of the hot press, and then I lined it up on my two hole stapler, um, a couple sheets at a time. It's actually a three hole stapler, and I just kind of lined it up so it was about even. Punched holes through all of them. And now I'm going to, um, when I did my review, my watercolor paper review, I learned some more things from some of you that are more knowledgeable about watercolor paper. And I was told to get 100% cotton and make sure it's sized. And at Hobby Lobby, there really isn't anything like that except for um, arches. But I did find this, it's called Bee Paper Company. And it was 100% cotton for watercolor paper acid-free, internally and externally sized, cold press. It was $12.99 for 25 sheets. And so I haven't tried it yet, but I'm gonna put some in for my mom, for her to have. I, I was hoping that it would fit in the container, but it doesn't. But I'm gonna experiment with this. And I also picked up some other stuff that I'll experiment with and let you know about. But I am going to use some 100% cotton paper. So. so because I'm a major pack rat, I actually have, um, so from one of these that was done, I have the cardboard from the back and I use that to cut two hard cardboard pieces to go on either side to make it into a nice little book. Except I got this white piece here. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Maybe I'll move that on the inside. Yeah. There we go. And then I got ribbon. That was a dollar from Hobby Lobby because it's pretty purple. My mom loves purple. And we're gonna just Okay, so I'm gonna wrap this up because I'm hoping that I'll dry tonight and be good for tomorrow. Um, I'm taking it to meet my mom, so I kinda rushed it. But I got Payne's Gray, Sap Green, Hansa Yellow, Naphthal Red, and this is Cobalt Violet, Prussian Blue, Phthalo Blue, Burnt Sienna, Quinacridone Rose, and they're all the um, M. Graham M. Graham and Company. I love these guys. So I just, I poured them in to the little pocket. I was going to make a little puddle along the edge with my hot glue gun, but I ran out of hot glue. So I'm going to tell mom just to run one across there that way. Yeah, that was beautiful. Anyway, so that, so that these edges, these circles can be a full set and they don't spill out into something else. So but I don't have any more glue to do it. So I'm gonna put my lid on and that separates my contact sheet and my book. I have watercolor pencils. These are Stadler and they're, they're pretty nice for the price. I, I'm, I've used them, they're very brilliant. So if you don't like brilliant colors, they're not really for you, but if you like really bright colors, then they're fantastic. And that is a, a Koi water brush. 
and then um, a black silver black velvet so she can do lard washes and then detail work with this and it's all wrapped up inside the box and um, I think I might put in a piece of bubble wrap just to kind of hold everything but that is my gift box to my mom and I hope you enjoyed it once it's dry it should look nicer but I'm, I'm pretty happy that it's got everything in there for the watercolorist on the go um, it won't really fit in your purse but she's traveling in an RV and so this this will be a nice little stick away box for her okay have a good day bye So if you enjoyed my video, please go on Amazon and buy my book. I wrote and illustrated it. It's based on a semi-true tale of a little teddy bear that was found in the Hiawatha National Forest. It's a cute story. Um, it's a true story. Most of it's true. And it's a good way to get your kids interested in taking care of the earth. So like, subscribe, buy my book, um, and come back. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Bye.